Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I have here the brand new Daphne's Diary diary for 2023 or the Daphne's Diary Journal, Daphne's Diary Planner. It's actually called the Daphne's Diary Journal on the website, but it's definitely the planner. And yeah, I'm really excited to show you a look through it because I don't think as I'm recording this, there has been anybody who has shown a flip through of this and the only reason why I bought it was because I really loved the cover and I was very curious about how it looked on the inside and of course I didn't I didn't have anywhere to see the inside so I was like you know what I'll just buy it this is my second Daffodil's diary planner the first one that I purchased was back in 2017 and I used mine as a memory planner and so I ended up doing a Daphne's Diary haul sometime in March, April of this year. And this planner was on sale because the year had already started. And so I picked it up because I was curious about it and I just wanted to see how it looked. I didn't know what I would use it for, um, but I just picked it up anyway. I believe in 2016, I used a Heidi Swap memory planner. And I think I was trying to continue with that, like doing that style of like scrapbooking and, and memory keeping, but in a Simple Stories Carpe Diem planner that really didn't, it, I didn't gel with it. It didn't really work out for me. And so I sort of kind of transitioned all of that memory keeping into here. So I did backtrack and do January and February. Um, but I just kept it really simple. I typed up my 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 sort of journaling or what I the little recaps of what I did throughout the week and printed them out and some collage, add some stickers, and then added some of my photos. And so I was thinking when I picked this up just to see how it looked on the inside that I may just do that because you know I haven't I haven't been scrapbooking. Like I think that sort of era of probably my crafty life is pretty much on pause. I don't want to say over, but pretty much on pause for right now because just the way that my life is going and transitioning, like I don't have time to, to do that. And so a lot of my memory keeping or my journaling is um, basically my five-year journal, which I've shared before. Um, I have enough time in the day just to jot down what I did that day. Um, and yeah, it's just writing. There's no pictures that are being printed or anything like that. It's just writing. And then in my tiny little journal, my little um, A6 journal, this is where I can add like the photos and the little things. A lot of the times I, I add like ticket stubs and uh, like things from clothing that I bought and I'll print out like the movie posters. And um, as far as me taking pictures, like I haven't really been taking pictures. It's a lot of these like little tags from things that I bought, screenshots of things, some pictures, but a lot and a lot of journaling, of just uh, heaps, heaps of journaling. And so this is mostly how I've been I've been, I guess, memory keeping. It's just straight up journaling, adding stickers, but mostly journaling. If there was a really cute picture that I took for Instagram, I would print it out, but it's just mostly journaling. journaling. Like I printed these photos, movie posters, because I saw these movies over one weekend, but like it's mostly that. It's not like, I haven't been taking that many pictures and I think I haven't been taking that many pictures because I just haven't been scrapbooking or like there's no reason for the pictures sort of anymore and so I kind of miss that I kind of miss having that sort of that sort of crafty outlet because I also haven't just haven't been art journaling either um and so I'm hoping that this little project for next year will get me to print out my Instagram photos or get me to print out or you know just print out photos and actually like take photos you know anyway that was a long spiel. I am going to open this now I love the the cover of this it's just gorgeous on the inside Cover is a pocket on the other side, on the back side is also a pocket. And then the first page we get to here is just sort of like the name, address, you know, sort of like your info page. And then we have a year at a glance for 2023 and 2024. And then this is that page that shows you how you can use the planner. Um, since I'm going to be using this more for memory keeping, I am definitely gonna take this out, I don't need it. Um, this is one of those perpetual 
calendars for each month. Again, I don't need it, so it's gonna come out. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna decoil the whole thing. So that is how I did this one. I decoiled all of it. So if you notice, um, there's no monthly because I took out the monthly and I took out all the pages that were in between the weeks. And I shifted designs around and just kind of put this in an order of how I liked it and then I just coiled it all back up again and so I'm going to do that for this one um, and it's just going to be a fun little couple of hours just deconstructing the planner and just building it up again how I like. This is, I love this, a bucket list for 2023. This is fantastic to have at the start of a memory planner. This is great. I love it. That's probably going to stay there and then I'm definitely going to cover this because this talks about the Daphne's Diary subscription and it's all in the different languages. Definitely going to cover that up with something. This is a contact page where you can keep special contacts. I don't need this, but I love the floral here. So what I'm probably going to do is going to take some maybe um, graph paper or writing paper and just kind of cover that up and like, use that to memory keep. That's great. Oh, this is perfect. So I'm going to do something like this, but on this side. So this is like a little diary page. Now I did flip through this briefly before I came on and all of these monthly pages are just absolute gorgeousness. I love all the artwork for it. Um, and it's different because this one didn't have that. This one had the artwork like for the beginning of each month, but it didn't have the month name on it. Um, I had to put these little tabs. So these are Planner Society tabs. Um, and Christie's designs just kind of matched so well with sort of the eclectic mismatched look of the diary. Um, and so what I did was I, um, I typed up the January, January, February, February, these things on my computer and printed them out, fussy cutted them, and put them on top of a, of a Planner Society tag um, tab. I don't think I have that many Planner Society tabs anymore, but I have a silhouette now and I've been making my own tabs. And so what I'm thinking of doing is probably getting some of the Daphne's Diary pattern papers and um, running that through my silhouette machine to cut tabs out of them um, so that I can mix and match them in the, in the planner. And then this is just something that I made on, um, on the, on the computer. Um, the fonts that Daphne's Diaries tend to use, they're free fonts that you can find online. Um, what really attracted me when I started uh, reading the Daphne's Diary magazine was this font, and I'm just like, that font looks so familiar. That font and the script font, the script font that I used here, like you can see them throughout the magazines, and I'm just like, those fonts look so familiar. I love them so much. Um, this font is called Simon Script, and that one is called, Je I want to say it's Jekyll. I know there's different versions of Jekyll. Um, I will leave links to them in the description box because they are free-to-use fonts. They've always been free-to-use fonts that you can just download for free online. And I had them. I had them on my computer. Um, and I'm just like, I knew I knew those fonts from somewhere because I have them on my computer. There was a time where I, when I got into graphic design work back in like, Oh, 2007, 2007, 2008. Um, and I would just kind of like stalk those free font websites and just like download every single font that I came across that was pretty or that I liked. And so I have like tons and tons of fonts and I can recognize tons and tons of fonts. But, but yeah, I'll leave those fonts in the description um, or links to them if I can find them again. Um, but one of them is called, this one's called Simon's Script. And then the other one, I believe, is Jekyll. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll leave links if you're interested. So that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to make my own tabs. But I love this. And so this folds out into the monthlies. I'm not going to use the monthlies. I got rid of the monthlies in the other one. And so I'll probably, what I will do is rip this page off and just keep this and put the tab on this. And then I, all the months in this one have like a food thing here. I don't really like it. So I'm probably going to glue this page to this page so that when you open up the month, it'll just go straight into the weekly spread. And so that is my thought process there. Um, and so I'm going to have this page that's left over. Um, some of these illustrations on this side of the monthly are really cute, but these have these little, um, kind of these little flaps that you can fussy cut. So that's really neat. So January is pancakes. <laughs> 
and then we go into the weekly. This weekly is horizontal. This one that I used was vertical weekly, which I think I prefer more for this type of memory keeping because then you can see the, the dates up here as opposed to on the side. Plus this is on the bottom and it 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 would mostly get covered up but you know I will I tend to work with the design that's already on the page so these are not going to be there in the middle I'm going to take them all out for every single week so I'm just going to have these two spreads and so I'll probably do a collage like over here and over here to sort of cover up all this stuff because I don't really like it so unfortunately I'm probably not going to see the dates but that is fine and so I'm just going to do a flip of all of the months. And I love these, these middle pages now because this planner, the, the one from 2017, didn't really have much design work on those middle insert pages. These seem to have a more heavy, heavily designed element on the backs, especially. So I can use this for writing, for journaling in my journals, or even in the planner itself because I did use a lot of these pages to sort of layer up. Um, I did a lot of collaging to layer up. Um, this design, I might cover it up. So these pages that I will cover up, if I can't find a design that I wanna cover up from here, I'll just get a magazine or some other image. Um, I think for this one, I use solely Daphne's diary images. And so for these pages, these came from the magazine. If they didn't come straight from the, the planner itself, they came from the magazine. Um, and I just kind of glued it. The ones that I replaced, I just glued them there. So that's probably what I'm gonna do here. February is gorgeous, love this. I like how these though are like flowers and they're black and white, my favorite. Um, so I'll probably definitely use that in my, in my journaling. The Daxons. And like a lot of these weekly spreads, oh, this one's cute. Oh, for Valentine's Day, that's really cute. Um, a lot of these weekly spreads, um, some of them aren't like my style or anything like that. These are some postcards, Marge. They're not like in my style and the ones that aren't really in my style, I just tend to work with. I just tend to work with whatever's there. Um, this type of memory key game, I remember it being very low key. It wasn't very stressful. I compiled all of my journaling throughout the week. And then at the end of the week, usually on Sunday, I sat down and I just, I just had fun gluing, gluing and sticking and doing collage work on the page and adding some of my photos. And I didn't do journaling because I had the type journaling. So there is that. This is April. And I just remember it being really, really fun. This is gorgeous. I love this monthly. Look at that, it's so pretty. Just remember it being really, really fun. And so I'm hoping that this will be sort of that scrapbooking, will give me that sort of scrapbooking feel, even though it's gonna be more like a glue book, memory keep, not so much a junk journal, but more of a glue book sort of memory keeper. And yeah, I, my, like if I have time, I will, try to film some process videos of making my weekly pages in here. Um, for this one, I do have a full flip of this entire planner, like the finished planner. Um, I also do have a couple of process videos working on some of these spreads. And so if you're interested in how that came together, um, I believe if you just uh, search on my channel for Daphne's Diary Memory Planner, all of those videos would pop up. And I think there's like a handful of them. And then I, I used to flip it monthly too, um, but there is a full flip through of this. If you're just curious to see how it turned out. I also have a flip through of it on Instagram as well. But yeah, I love this. So pretty, so pretty. This is what I mean by like a really nice journaling spot. This doesn't have any holidays, but this one says we love moms. I'm assuming Mother's Day lands on here. <laughs> I don't actually know when it actually lands, but I'm assuming that. But yeah, like the the, the layouts that aren't really my thing, I'm going to definitely cover that up. Snowflake, but in June, like it's something else is going to go there. This is June. This is really cute. I like how this matches with this. <laughs> 
It looks so cute. Anyway, for the ones that just aren't my sort of aesthetic, I love like the like muted kind of pastel -y pages, but the ones that are really bright, I just tend to go with the flow. Like I don't think about it too much. And in the end, like like this page for instance, like when have you ever seen me use orange or like a dark red? Um, I just go with the flow and usually I love how it turns out. And so that's what I'm really excited about, like jumping into this sort of memory keeper. And I haven't done something like this in a very, very long time. These is a sh this is a sheet of label stickers. Now these are glossy, so it's going to be kind of difficult to um, find a pen that can write on this. I'm thinking maybe a ballpoint pen or a biro would... Um, would usually, it would work really well because they don't tend to smudge like gel inks um, or maybe a Sharpie, right? Um, but those are little frame label stickers. Love July, oh my God, this is so gorgeous. Love that artwork. And then here is the calendar, Greek salad. But yeah, this would be really fun to just go back and start doing a little bit of memory keeping in a planner or memory planning. Because I used to do them in the uh, Heidi Swap memory planners, but I don't think Heidi Swap is coming out with those memory planners, the ones in the binders. Oh my God, this is gorgeous. I love this pattern. It is so pretty. Um, I don't think she's ever coming back with those, like the ones that are in the albums. Um, I think she's sort of moved on to the storyline chapters, her little little chapter book things that do have planners and people are doing the memory keeping in there, um, which sometimes I kind of scroll through the hashtag and, and look through on Instagram. Um, yeah, I love these diary pages. I kind of wish that every month ended with one of these because then you can just recap your month that's such a good idea. Maybe when I when I go ahead and like cover this up, maybe I'll just put like a pattern paper and then like graph paper or grid paper so then I can just do a recap. That would really be really nice to have. This is September's. Love this. So pretty. This is cute. But yeah, so that's my thought of how I'm going to use this particular planner. I really love these postcards. I kind of like the ones that are like watercolory and then they're um, layered. They're so pretty. This is really cute. But yeah, that's how I think I'm going to use this particular planner. I am going to do a memory, memory planner. And I think my goal is maybe to... Um, stick with just using Daphne's Diary magazine and like Daphne's Diary products. Um, that's kind of what I did for this one. I like this was from the magazine. This was also from the magazine. Um, I did add this is like a Maggie Holmes piece. I did add some of like my scrapbooking stuff like some stickers and washi tape and stuff like that. But for the most part like these are not Daphne's Diary obviously. Um, I think some of these stickers are, yeah, there are the Daphne's Diary. Um, you know, the stickers that came in the planner. I try to use those up too. And these are the pages that were in the, the middle. You know, I use them as like layering, layering elements behind my little clusters. Lots of doilies, lots of stickers. Um, this was a Daphne's Diary. I think I fussy cut it that from something. But yeah, I tried my best to use just Daphne's Diary products. Um, obviously, some of my puffy stickers and things like that ended up in here as well. But um, like these are all Planner Society. These butterflies are from Maggie Holmes. So, you know, I did use bits and pieces. And I think I will continue to use bits and pieces because I have a huge stash of stuff that I'm currently not using, but I think I'm just going to try really hard to stick with just Daphne, Di Daphne's diary designs only because I think they would be the things that easily matched with this planner, you know, so it won't be as difficult to like mix and match certain things. The ending of October is another diary page. November is this one. I'm not really keen on that, um, but it's fine. We'll use it. 
and so some guard. See, I would prefer like this on the 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 little cover for the month because I love these little cute little garden gnomes. So cute. Um, but yeah, so this is November. And then this is December. This one's okay. It's it's very um, fitting for the season. Um, it reflects the holiday. So does this. I might cover this up because I don't really like that. Um, but this is fine. I love... See, I kind of like the designs that have like an illustration and then like you have the, the snow layered and then you have the writing layered. I just really like that look. And I, I find that Daphne's Diary Magazine tends to do that really well. This monthly is very pretty. I love that pink. And this is New Year's and then that's it there's another sheet of glossy um, label stickers and then we have this note this notes page which is a nice way to end the the planner and then here so this little envelope was tucked in this pocket when you receive it and it has some more goodies in it I did take it out just to see what they were and so I love this envelope. It's a nice um, glycine, uh, vellum envelope. We'll keep that for something. But the sh bigger sheets we have, we have some tabs here. So these are stickers. These are all stickers. And yeah, these are some tabs for the planner. But I probably won't use these tabs. Um, the colors are a bit too bright for me. I sort of like the eclectic look of having these sorts of tabs. And so I'm going to kind of do that instead. But you have tabs here. You have a sheet of little sort of like labels and banners that you can use on your calendar. Again, these are on glossy paper, so um, finding a pen that would work and not smudge might be a little difficult. And then these are strips, so these are kind of like washi strips, again in that glossy finish. And then we have a little ruler here. And so we have centimeters and then inches, so that's really cute. And then we have this little this little tag, which is so darling. I absolutely love this little tag. I don't know what I'm going to use her for, but she is so cute. Um, and so those are all the little goodies that are in this little pocket here. And I feel like this is the first time that the planner had these little extras in, which I think is a fantastic idea. And I feel like Daphne should do that more often um, with these particular planners is like adding some little extra, some little extra bits at the end. I think that's a really, really nice touch. And this is the back of that. So yeah, this agenda was 1995. So about 20 euros. Um, I feel like I want to say at Barnes and Nobles, they're about 30 bucks. I don't know. I've never actually, I've never actually um, purchased one from Barnes and Nobles. I saw the one from last year at Barnes and Nobles. I, I believe the price was $29.95. Um, so I paid pretty much 20 bucks USD, but I paid it in euros on the website. But again, the shipping, I think, balances it all out. Um, but I did buy a bunch of things, so... I don't know. It's it's one it's one of those things, right? Like, do you really want it? Um, for me, like, I try to, I try to not buy so many things, but I also just try to be conscious of how much I sp I'm spending, and like, shipping has just raised. Like, the price of shipping has increased so much that, like, you know, it doesn't really matter where you buy from, like. Like the, the, you know, the other day I wanted to buy a few things from Muji and I'm just like, do I want to go downtown to a Muji store and get it? Or do I just want to order it online? And the shipping on Muji is like $9. And I'm just like, for the price of what the product actually costs on Muji, um, I'm just like, do I want to spend? And is, that's a flat fee. It's like, I think it's flat. I'm not sure if it increases after a certain amount, but for like one thing that, for one thing that's $5, the shipping is 9 And so didn't buy anything from Muji. I actually went to a store and got things from Muji, but that sort of thing. Like, but you see it across the board for like 
any type of store, right? Um, and usually international shipping has always been really high. It's been at least 20 bucks. Um, now, well, I know Daphne's Diary used to be 20 bucks back in 2017. Um, now it's about, I think it's like a flat and it's like 32 euros. So that's about $33. And so that only makes sense if they're just going to buy a lot of stuff, I think. It just, uh, it just weighs it. And how can I explain that? Um, again, this is a 20, 20 euro diary, which right now the euro and the, the USD is pretty much even. So it's $20. Barnes and Nobles, I believe it's 30. So you have that $10 added to that already. Then, you know, what else did I buy? I bought two magazines, you know, in that same haul which is the video before this one. I bought two magazines. You know, these magazines are $16.95 at Barnes & Nobles. Um, on the Daphne's Diary website, I believe they're about, um, I mean, it says, um, oh, that's in pounds. I think um, in, in euros, they're about um, eight, eight euros, or I think they're about eight euros. I have my thing here somewhere. Yeah, I think they're about eight euros on on the website, which comes out to roughly like I think on the Daphne's Diary website it it like um, converted the price to about ten dollars. But again, the at the time I'm filming this, at the time I bought this, the the price between euro and USD is pretty much even. So if these are eight euros, then they're probably $8 um, each. Again, Barnes and Nobles for one issue is $16.95. And so that is like another, if it's $8, it's another $8 per issue, right? So it's $16 plus the 10, that's already $26 um, extra if I were to get this at Barnes and Nobles. Um, and my shipping was $33 and I bought more stuff. You know, I bought the two pads and the calendar, which if these were sold at Barnes and Nobles would have just, you probably, it would have just been even, you know, so that's how I see certain things, um, I guess to justify costs, but it just, it all makes sense. At least it all makes sense to me. Anyway, so um, yeah, I just wanted to flip through this for you in case you were interested in the planner and interested in getting it for next year. And I also wanted to show you how I'm planning to use it. I'm planning to make it into a memory planner. I really love this memory planner. Like every time I look through it and it's so simple, but it just, it was so much fun to make and it's just even more fun to look through, right? Um, I absolutely love it. And so I'm really excited to convert this into something like this. And my hope is to share the process of that, but I've been so busy um, just with work, <laughs> with work. I did get a new job and I got the new job on top of like, I do tutoring on top of my social media work um, that I do for like the podcast. Like I just... I don't know. And then like my stuff and like, I really, my, my friend is just like, why are you doing tutoring? Like, you don't need to do that anymore. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But you know, like, it's just, these are just flows. These are things that I've been doing for years, you know? And like, now that I have this like full-time, full-time job, it's just, I'm trying to keep all of that stuff while still do this too. And so I basically had to sacrifice something and it has been crafting and it has been sitting around and playing with things and making videos and stuff like that. And it's just, that's just how it is. But I'm really hoping that if I can get into some sort of flow or in some sort of system, um, that I, you know, I have to just make time for it. I just have to figure out how to make time for it. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm really hoping to, to come back and like do some videos for you. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to show you this, show you how I'm going to be using it. And yeah, I really hope you enjoy this look at the Daphne's Diary Planner for 2023 and how I'll be using it. And yeah, thank you so much for watching, like always. And I will see you all next time. Bye.